Hello everyone. Welcome to another end time video where we anxiously wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know he's coming and we know that we're in the end times. But we just don't know when. Um, some friends of mine have predicted that he would have come over the high holy days and he didn't. So we're going to keep looking. We still know it's not very far away. And the reason we know that is we're part of the fig tree generation. Israel was established in 1948 as a state, but they were recognized in 47 by the UN. So whether you pick 47 or 48, if you count out the 70 to 80 years that we're told a generation is, we're in that time frame right now. And I believe that the prophecy is talking about the actual end time return of the Lord and not the rapture. So that's at the end of the seven year period. So that puts us even closer when he comes back and, and collects us up into the clouds. I don't think we're gonna know the time or date because Jesus is protecting us. Satan is still around. Satan is still being used by God as a tool. He has complete control over Satan and anything he does, but he's a tool. He's a tool to tempt us, to chastise us, to whatever God can't do, he allows Satan to do to us. And the only protection we have is to stay as close to God as possible, to make sure that we are repenting daily and that we pray daily. That's why our Lord's Prayer tells us to protect us from evil, from the evil one. And we do that daily, as well as everything else that we ask. The Lord's Prayer te tells us to recognize who God is, recognize that he is God in heaven, and then focus on ourselves and others. So as we get into the uh, message today, be sure that you are safe. Be sure that you are a Christian, because if you're not, you're going to miss out on an easy way out of here. The tribulation time is coming. Whether it's the great tribulation from the midway point, you know, further, or the beginnings of the tribulation, the birth pains as we're feeling them now. Just look around the world. If you don't see what's going on now, you're not paying attention. Although some people have turned the news off because it is getting too, too controversial. But anyhow, let's look at uh, some news headlines here. I'm going to pull up uh, the Jerusalem Post again and just see what's going on. We can use what's going on in Jerusalem as an indication of what's going on in the rest of the world as far as our time on earth is going to be looked at. So uh, they're still suffering like the rest of the world is as far as unemployment because of COVID. Uh, it currently says that they've got uh, almost 1 million Israelis are unemployed, uh, half below the age of 34. So they're still struggling too. But while they're struggling, they're still doing some things for us. Uh, they're starting to test a new 10 minute COVID test. The trials have begun. They have a lot of technology there and they do a lot of research and we don't know about all of it sometimes because the media doesn't focus on Israel that much. But they're doing a lot of things for us. And this new test is, is definitely something we look forward to because like last week, I had to be tested twice for two different film projects. And that's why my look is the way it is. I have to change my look. So if you've seen my other videos, you know that I'm, I'm a little bit different, but I have to look good on camera for them or different on camera for them than I do here. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, Mnuchin says that uh, a Trump win would bring more peace, more countries to the uh, peace table. And so these are things that they're talking about. Um, the UN has also started an embargo on Iran, um, or the, I should say the end of an embargo in, on Iran. And we know that Russia says as soon as their embargo ends, that they're going to start shipping missiles and everything else to them again. So the UN is not helping the situation. Uh, they should be, but too many of their countries are part of the northern tribes that don't want Israel to succeed. And let's see, what else do we have? I think that's pretty much it. Um, our celebrity uh, 
Israeli Gal Gadot is uh, going to be playing Cleopatra in, in a movie. So those are things that are going on. She did a great Wonder Woman. Uh, she was part of the Israeli military as all uh, young adults uh, go into the military as part of the uh, custom and, and set up in Israel. I think it's a good thing. I'm ex-military and it definitely helped me in, in seeing what the future should be. Okay, I want to get started now. Um, Jesus a number of times talked about the end times and about the troubles that they were going to be into. And a lot of them had to do with what was immediately going to happen to them. And we know that they were, were under persecution. When Jesus was here, they were under Roman law and Roman persecution. Um, Herod was a figurehead uh, appointed in that because he would follow along with the Roman government. He was not much of a religious leader. Uh, but Jesus, uh, let's look at uh, John 14, starting in verse 1. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. So, Jesus was about to be crucified and go up to heaven to be with God, his Father. But he was going to prepare a place for us because we're going to join him there. That's what the rapture is about. That's what the end time, if you want to call it rapture, is about. We're all going to be with God. Okay. Jesus is going to come down here and rule for a thousand years. But ultimately, we're going to get a new heaven and earth. And we're going to be under God's loving care, even more so than we are now, because we see dimly through this fog that we have here. We, we can't really see God in his entirety because of where we are and what we're made of. I also want to cover a little bit of Ephesians uh, 3.25. There will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth dismay among nations, in perplexity at the roaring of the sea and of the waves, men fainting from fear and the expectation of the things which are coming upon the world. For the powers of heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But then these things will begin to take place. Straighten up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And then he told them the parable of the fig tree. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they put forth leaves, you see it and know for yourself that summer is now near. So you also will see these things happening recognize that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts will not be weighted down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life. And that day will come it will come on you suddenly like a trap, for it will come upon all those who dwell on the face of the earth. Keep on alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are about to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. And that's pretty much my message right now. We are waiting for the return, but we can see things getting worse. United States, which has been a, a, a bastion of Christianity, if not just plain religious freedom, it's under assault right now. We have governors in certain states that are saying, you can go to a massage parlor, but you cannot go to church. You can go to a bar, but you cannot go to church. They are trying to restrict access to church. 
Now we've got some church leaders who are going against this because we are to follow the law of God over the law of man. And some are being persecuted for it. So we need to pray for them. They're doing the right thing. Now, I went to church this morning. Our church is taking precautions by having us sit distance apart. There are tapes on the pews so we can know where to sit and keep our distance. Every other pew is taped off. And those that are my age and older are wearing masks. Um, families are sitting together so that they're all uh, staying in their tight group. And everything was fine. And it was great to be able to hear the music and hear the ambience of the, of the people singing. I've been watching on live uh, broadcast every week. This is my first weekend back. And I think I will go from now on. Uh, there's no reason if you're taking full precautions like this to stay home. So if you're thinking about it, find out what your church is doing. Stay involved. Don't lock yourself in and shut yourself off to God. That's exactly what Satan wants. Now again, Satan can't do any more than what God lets him do. And that's one of the reasons that we're gonna be taken out of here. Because as long as we're here and we're praying for the salvation of people and for countries and whatever else is going on in the world, if we're praying for it, Satan can't do anything because God is far more powerful. Satan's power is a, it's a drop in the ocean. And that's even given him more power than he deserves. So we keep praying, God keeps delaying, but eventually that time's gonna run out. So you need to make sure that you're a Christian. What do you need to do to be a Christian? You don't have to do anything but accept the free gift. Jesus died as a sacrifice on the cross for you, a sacrifice for your sins, because we're all sinners. We, all, we are all sinners and come short of the glory of God. There's nothing anybody can do to work their way to heaven. So that's why Jesus had to die. Jesus was God incarnate on earth, but he did that for us because he loves us. You have to understand, that's how much he loves us. I'm not gonna go into the details of the cross. That's covered in the Old Testament, actually, what the pain was like, what the sacrifice was like. He did that for us. So all you have to do is accept this free gift. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That's it, accept Jesus. There's nothing you can do to work your way into heaven. Mother Teresa could not work her way into heaven despite all the great works that she did if she were not already a Christian. Now, good works, they're a sign of your Christianity. Being baptized is an outward sign of your Christianity and your belief, but it will not in themselves get you to heaven. Accepting Jesus, that's why it's the easiest thing you can do. And once he comes into your life, you get the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit will help guide you. Now, he's not going to be yelling and screaming at you. God doesn't do things like that. You have to be quiet and listen. You have to have your prayer time. You have to read the Bible. And God will speak to you that way. He won't speak to you through friends most of the time. His friends don't know what's going on. But he will speak to you directly through his word in the quiet times that you have. So, as we get ready for the coming of the Lord, we need to rejoice because it is going to be a great and glorious time. The world is going to suffer for their bad behavior. So if you're seeing people do bad, forgive them, pray for them. God will deal with them in time. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Leave everything to Him. Don't carry that burden. It's too much. So continue to pray for yourself and family and friends. Pray for our country and countries around the world. Around the world. Pray for Jerusalem because we know that they're going to come under attack uh, here soon at the uh, beginning of the end times coming up. Uh, pray for them. They're going to have to flee into the mountains at some point because the Antichrist is going to do that. So pray for them. And I look forward to seeing you 
in the clouds. So bye for now. God bless.